So, on this installment of the Fortnite of Terror, I'd like to talk about two separate films. They're both based on the same source material. Um, they came out about like 30 years apart from each other. Maybe a little bit more. And, um, yeah, it's weird because like they're both based on the same story. They're both based on the system of Dr. Tar and Professor Feather by Edgar Allan Poe. Which was, you know, I don't know, it's from the 1800s. I'm not entirely 1854, I think that came out. I think maybe, but um, it 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 doesn't it doesn't really make any difference. It's like it's pretty it's it's um it's just like a really really short story. It's about like four pages long, I think, when you look at it in print. Um, it's about this guy who goes to an an insane asylum, and it turns out that there was like a revolution there, and the crazy people imprisoned like the people who were working there, and they um sort of like just running shit their own way and like being all weird and it's like it's weird because it's kind of like a dark comedy almost by him it's a uh, it's like the this the story itself is pretty cool it's like it's pretty much just this guy <laughs> he's riding around in a carriage with his friend and he's like hey you know they do something weird there in that uh that, that asylum you should go there you know so he <laughs> so he goes in there and he just he has dinner with a bunch of lunatics and um then at the end like the people who who work there and like have these people like locked up and stuff just come back and like start punching everyone and like lock them back up in their cells and then it's over but he's like he's going through this whole dinner and everybody's like they think they're chickens and shit like that and like teapots you know and, and they're just, they're trying to hold it together the entire time because they know there's one sane guy in the room <laughs> they, they don't want to get busted and that's pretty much like the whole like tension and like kind of it's spooky and kind of fun but like maybe not so much to uh like modern sensibilities it's like maybe a little you know because like we know like a lot more about like mental illness now it's like yeah you know okay people probably not like most people who lose their shit don't like end up thinking they're horses you know? <laughs> right and it's it's just kind of like but you know it's still it's it's a it's a it's a cool story but there's two films based on this. One from 1973 by, um, what is the fucking dude's name? Jose Lopez Montezuma, who also did, uh, he did a few other things that I've seen. He's, like, one of the few Mexican directors that I really know a whole lot about. He did, uh, he did this, and the other one I've seen by him is Alucardo, which is fucking awesome. It's, like, a weird, like, non-sploitation possession kind of semi vampire movie but not really it's just like super panicky and like goat worship and naked girls coming out of coffins covered in blood it's awesome Elgard is cool and you should totally check that out apparently that's one of uh uh del toro's favorite movies you know the, the guy who did like hellboy and crimson peak and shit like that you know pan's labyrinth the yeah like it's it's like uh, Juan Lopez is one of his, um, inspirations. But anyway, back to the meat of the thing I'm trying to say here. Yeah, so there's Dr. Tar's Torture Dungeon from 1973, and, uh, Stonehurst Asylum. I think that came out in 2013. It's directed by the dude who did The Machinist and The Call. He, he does a lot of, like, he normally does, like, a lot of suspense and, like, kind of psychological thrillers and shit, and for some reason this movie as well. I don't... Like, it's kind of weird. It's like a divergence for him. And of course I can't remember the motherfucker's name. Uh, super pro of me. Here we go. Stonehurst Asylum. I'm gonna look it up on IMDb while I'm talking. Because I'm an idiot. Here we go. 2014 it came out. Uh, what, are your, what is your name? Brad Anderson is the dude who directed it, and he's done, he did Session 9, which is fucking horrifying, another movie that takes place primarily in an insane asylum, but this one, Session 9 is awesome, I'm probably going to do something about Session 9 at like a later time, but um, yeah, so these two movies, based on the same source material, entirely different films, and it's cool to analyze them, because like it kind of shows like the difference in sensibilities between like kind of 70s the horror filmmaking and like modern horror filmmaking i think a little bit anyway anyway 
start out with uh, Dr. Tar's Torture Dungeon. Uh, it's also called Mount, uh, The Mansion of Madness, if you want to look it up and watch it, and you totally should, because this it's actually, like, my favorite of the two. It's, it's, a, it's a very cool movie. So Juan Lopez Montezuma, right? <sighs> His whole thing. Yeah, like, this movie, it starts out, it's very, like, it's very... It, it starts out feeling like the, um, kind of like the whole Hammer films, like, aesthetic, like the, kind of like those Dracula movies from, like, around the same time from England, you know what I mean? It's like people going through, like, a foggy forest, you know, in a, in a carriage, they, um, you know, they get stuck, there's, like, a tree, and they can't get out of the way, and they, the dude ends up going to this insane asylum, and, um, that's where... It starts getting weird, right? Because Juan Lopez Montezuma is awesome. He's <laughs> sweet. He's one of my favorite directors. Like he, um, he's he's definitely uh, associated with Alejandro Jodorowsky, but he's not like technically part of like. I don't think he's part of the Panic Movement guys. You know what I mean? I don't think he's like part of like Aeroball and all those dudes. But you can definitely see the influence of all that, like in his filmmaking, because like what he does is it's, like, a lot of it's, like, in the pacing. Like, his his movies, like, they have... The two I've seen, anyway, they have, like, a really kind of oppressive atmosphere. Like, the whole way through, they're, like, they're very foggy, and, like, it's people walking around in ruins and shit. It's very gothic. This is, um, totally what's going on at Dr. Tar's Torture Dungeon, because it's, like, the guy shows up, he meets the superintendent of this thing, like, there's a whole bunch of dudes standing outside dressed like Napoleon, you know, like, guarding the place, and it's, like, very weird. And, um, you know, like, he meets this chick, and, uh, like, he ends up, like, staying there for a while to, like, check out the system. You know what I mean? Like, because it's supposed to be a system where they're super nice to the, like, the patients there, and, like, they just kind of let them do whatever they want. You know what I mean? And that's the conceit of the short story as well. It's, like, they kind of, like, indulge people's, like, weird shit. Like, you know, you think you're a teapot? Cool. You can f sit over there and think you're a teapot, like, all day, and we'll totally you know, be excited about that with, <laughs> you know what I mean, and that's supposed to cure people, you know, so, but that's, like, that's the general, like, consensus of what's going on, so he's, like, walking around, talking to this doctor, and shit gets progressively weird, right, like, he's walking around, he meets this girl, he was, like, this is, this is, um, I'll get, I'll get to this later, actually, but this is, a this is a current in both movies, no, I'll get to it now, as a matter of fact. This is a current in both movies that really diverges from the story. It, that the um, the male protagonist is going to come in, and he's going to have, like, a B-plot with one of the, uh, like, one of the, like, women that he meets there. It's going to be, like, a whole big, like, weird deal between, uh, like, you know, w with, like, this, like, relationship. And, um, like, in the, in the short story, he just... Like, the guy shows up, he meets a girl, he realizes that she's probably crazy, and, like, done. It's over. You know what I mean? He just goes to dinner with these people, never spoken of again. She does some weird shit at the table, she starts getting naked and stuff. And he's like, ooh, and everyone's all fucking upset about it. Uh, but, yeah, like, that's it. But the two, the two film versions of this, like, the, like, the girl patient is, like, it's a great big deal of the plot, right? So... But, like, not in the short story. It's very weird. But, <clears throat> anyway, back to the film. So this guy's walking around, and, like, half the movie he's just doing, like, tours of the whole place. And, like, the the guy who runs it, who's actually, like, one of the escaped, like, patients, you know, he's walking around, and he's talking about all this stuff. And, like, it just kind of gets gradually weirder to the point where, like, he starts talking about, like, orgone energy and, like western ceremonial magic and like all these inventions and shit that he's working on and he's like showing like this guy this room with all these like weird glass cages and all this like crazy shit and then like but this is this is a uh, Makazuma's like pacing is like it just it gradually ramps up until like everything's all crazy and fucking panicky and weird right so like towards the end of this thing like the like, all the inmates and stuff, they just start freaking out and having this, like, weird kind of party and shit. And, like, they have, like, a giant bonfire and it gets, like, super violent and panicky and everybody's running around all crazy. <laughs> kind of like at the end of Alucarda because, like, 
it, the, the, these movies, like, they're similarly paced. Like, they start out kind of slow. Like, they're definitely oppressive and weird, like, the whole way. And it just kind of, like, the tension and, like, the pacing just kind of builds up until, like, at the end, it's just, like, screaming and goat worship and, like, people fucking, like, freaking out and roofs falling in on monks and stuff like that. Awesome. Awesome all the way through. Very cool. And I highly recommend this one. I, like, I highly recommend this movie. Like, any line of dialogue from this movie could be the, um... Like, the intro sample to a black... Uh, like, a doom metal song. Like, anything. <laughs> you know, like, you just take, like, a snippet of this and then just hit, like, a nasty, bassy guitar and then doom metal album after that. It's very, very cool. The whole thing. Stonehurst Asylum different movie altogether based on the same shit it's like same basic stuff happens right but it focuses a lot more on the backstory of like the guy who goes to the asylum and like there's like all this there's a weird like twist ending that doesn't really make too much sense but it's strange because like it's a the movie itself is like it's a lot cleaner narratively you know it's got like from like a screenwriting standpoint it's got like you know that just beginning middle and end and denouement like structure you know and it's got like the stock characters like they he uh whoever wrote this i think let's look at it again i should have done my research of course before i did this did he write this as well yes i believe he did machinist stoner's asylum yeah he wrote this as well, but, like, he, like, puts, you know, a whole bunch of, like, recognizable kind of character archetypes in this, which, um, as opposed to Dr. Tar's Torture Dungeon, where there's, there's pretty much, like, you know, four main characters, and, like, none of them, like, really fit, like, kind of, like, classical, like, roles, like, in a story. You know, like, one or two of them do, but the rest of them are just kind of there. And like doing things, which I like, I find I find nice. I, like I, I find it really good. It kind of adds to like a spooky, like dreamlike aspect of this. Like there's characters in there, don't really make any sense or need to be there, but they're there anyway, and they're doing things. <laughs> like a lot of things are happening, and that's very cool. But um, Stoner's Asylum's a it's a fucking good movie. I mean, you know, it's just you know, it's not as good as Doctor Tar's Torture Dungeon. What um, like what this movie really has going for it is the cast right like there's so many fucking like super famous like actors in this that have like been working a lot especially in the past few years and it's like dude this got such a limited release in the united states i don't really know why but like michael caine's in it freaking um david flewis from many many films <laughs> you know? uh naked uh, one of the Die Hard movies, Harry Potter series, you know, you, you know David Lewis, is. Lewis, Lewis, Kate Beckinsale in it, super hot, like, in her whole old-timey dress and everything, she, she's like the female B-story character interest, which, you know, never showed up in the, in the book, uh, who else is in it, man, there's a ton of people, that have David Thewlis, uh, yeah, Jim Sturgis, he's Brendan Gleeson, also from the Harry Potter films, Michael Caine, I said Ben, ben Kingsley's in this, Jason Fleming, like, there's, a, like, a ton of fucking people in this that, you know, it's got star power, and it's got, like, yeah, it's a decent movie, but it's not, um, you know, it's just not quite as good as Dr. Tar's Torture Dungeon. <laughs> by any means but like you know if you can only see one this halloween season i'd go for dr tar's torture dungeon but you know if you've got the time to see two movies based on the same uh same source material i would totally go and yeah i'd, I'd give them i'd give them both a shot you know they're, they're both easy to find they're, they're both like streaming um yeah you know but yeah like this um It definitely shows, like, a difference between, like, modern filmmaking and filmmaking from, like, 30 years ago. You know, in atmosphere, like, this, like, 
like uh, Stonehurst Asylum, like it tries to produce an atmosphere, and like it's um this like this director, right? He's normally really really good at making like creepy just atmospheric films out of them. Like Session Nine is fucking horrifying the whole way through. That almost feels like a one Lopez Montezuma movie, honestly, because it just like it's just super like just there's gross feeling and tension like all the way through, and there's like it amps up and it's just it's crazy at the end. But like this this one, not so much. There's just there's something going on with it. It's just, like maybe just it feels too clean, possibly. Like it's definitely like the rambling ruins and an asylum and all that, but like the set design and everything and just like the lighting and the way it's shot, kind of makes it. It just kind of makes it feel a little, maybe more artificial than Doctor Tar, you know. So, uh, yeah, but like, and it's a little. It's it. Of course, it's like it's slicker. You know what I mean? It's like. Editing wise, it, it it doesn't rely so much on like the long shots of Doctor Tar's torture dungeon because they do a little lot in there. They do like you know the camera roves a little bit more. The um, you know, there's like a big action set piece at the end which doesn't quite make any sense. But uh, yeah, I can't really tell you anything about the end of Stonehurst Asylum just in case you see it because there is a twist and it's I don't really see it coming because it's it, like. It's kind of contrived, and, like, it just, it doesn't really need to be there, you know? But, uh, maybe I don't like that movie. No, I do. I do. I had a good time. I had a good time watching it. Yeah, okay, well. Alright, so, in conclusion, <laughs> Dr. Tar's Torture Dungeon is a far superior adaptation to Stonehurst Asylum. But both movies are pretty fucking cool. And uh, they're both in keeping with the season, and you should totally watch them if you want. I think this has gone on for like 17 minutes, so I'm out.